in the sequence where we had the Bigfoot encounter, we had two fully charged cameras and they should have been lasted for hours and hours. So I got about 25 to 30 minutes out of those cameras before they died. And that's it. Awesome. Well, I want to know what you're going to do with your bucket list now that you've got a, a documentary on Tubi. You were a keynote speaker at the Alabama Bigfoot Conference, and now it's the Caffeinated Cryptid. So check, well, check, and check. Bucket list. Check, check, check. Hey, that, that, uh, hey, I can die happy now. I'm Take that, Mount Everest. Cryptid. That is the last <laughs> check on my bucket list. <laughs> what if it was? That'd be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> like you like you're you didn't know it you're like nail you're like a feral person you thought this was I, like the, i am the yeah if you ask my friends i'm a feral person who was i was talking to about feral children uh, the legends of them and how they after a certain age they couldn't be reassimilated back they just ended up you know kind of a ward of the state i mm-hmm. said well jody foster is doing pretty good <laughs> <laughs> she was like 15 years old mm. we got blondes and booze Where's that? oh there we are Howdy. Kristen Brandy. I better be on my best behavior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some, she'll, some, um, she'll, she'll shank you if it's Brandy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like prison. Just... Yeah. She's from Michigan. She'll shank you. Oh my gosh. It's even worse. Yeah. Is it Taylor, Michigan or just a. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Just anywhere up there up north. Straight out of the streets of Taylor. Mm-hmm. So you're talking about how you got started in documentary making and uh, we'll get mm-hmm. into that later, but how did you incorporate the, uh, cryptid side of it how'd you get into that well um it, it all really started when um i was had been hunting and fishing all my life got tired of it mm-hmm. uh if you're hunting and you're successful you've you know killed an animal and uh y- you know it, it that just didn't uh that didn't appeal to me anymore and mm-hmm. the same happened with fishing. I just got so tired of, uh, uh, you know, just doing the same old things. Oh yeah. So I'd always had a uh, interest in, you know, cryptids. When, when I was young, I had a UFO experience, and uh, I had also seen some footprints that were really strange. I, I really wouldn't call them Bigfoot footprints. I would probably they're more probably more akin to Dogman footprints. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'd always had a uh, uh, an interest in that, you know. Grew up watching in search of with, uh, you know, you know, Spot. You know, oh yeah, <laughs> Leonard Nimoy. Leonard uh, Nimoy. So you know, it, it always fascinated me. And uh, mm-hmm. there was one day that I just like, okay, I'm going to stop being on the on the couch, you know, and get myself involved in it. So. I got onto a Facebook group and met up with this guy named Paul Holsey who mm-hmm. uh, kind of took me out, you know, and took me by the hand. We went out and just showed me the ropes and whatnot. And I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, what I do for a living is I investigate crashes and I solve these mysteries and, oh yeah, you know, so I was like, I want to bring some of that stuff into this game. You know, it, it should be pretty easy to, to, to figure out. So I brought some of those same skills in there. I was like, okay, I'm documenting things. So while I'm documenting things, let's make a documentary. How hard can it be? Right. How hard can it be? <laughs> it can't be hard. <laughs> yeah. How hard can it be? That seems yeah, easy. It can be real hard. Yeah. That seems, that seems, uh, yeah, I was thinking like, uh, I didn't, I didn't know if you were a traffic. I knew you work with traffic and something mm-hmm. of that nature. I do. I, I, I do. Now that you say what you actually do, I can see how it would trans like almost be like the same set of skills. It, it is. It, 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 it's some of the same skill set. Uh, some of the very same skill set. You uh, don't need upside down spray paint though. No, you don't need that. Uh, and I, nor do I need uh, uh, a fluorescent jacket on. <laughs> safety third. Yep. Safety third. But, <laughs> but um, little did I know that, you know, there's actually a whole lot to making a documentary and making it entertaining. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we, one of the ways I found out about it is on our first outing, we went out and I, I found some, just some 
fascinating evidence. You know, we found these footprints. They kind of went on around a pond. They were 16 inches long, seven inches wide. Really? Go ahead. Oh, I said, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's yeah. massive. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, they were huge footprints. And, you know, they were five and a half feet uh, in stride you know, between footprints. I mean, they were in my mm -hmm. footprints. And this was literally on our first outing. We'd been in the woods maybe an hour or so. And, uh, you know, even, you know, granted we were deep in the woods, but you know, we went out very long at all. And then we came across some more footprints, but before I got to those footprints, I found something that looked like a bird's nest, except it was gigantic. It was huge. I oh. could get inside the thing, but it was on its side. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was right beside a game trail. And, you know, we were kind of joking around about it at first, you know, like, hey, man, I can hide up in here, you know, you know, just getting mm -hmm. up and just playing around. Um, and then right after uh, we were playing around, we started looking in the, you know, this was right at the edge of um, a field, but it was just just inside the woods. Right when we got into the field, we see these footprints that was leading away from uh, the, the giant bird, bird's nest, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, that was like, Dad gum, here's more footprints. So, you know, we're going to solve this mystery in just a heartbeat. It, <laughs> it's not going to take us long at all. Nope. We're, we're going to prove all this stuff, right? Uh, and was, we were having magnificent evidence. And, you know, I was getting up and, you know, just talking about all this evidence that we were finding. And I came across uh, these bat houses in this same field that had these four by four posts and on the four by four mm -hmm. posts, there were fingerprints on it, four fingers on the one side of the uh, face and then a thumbprint on the same side of the face, mm -hmm. just on the other side. Like you could reach, so where's that reach around it like this, right? Anyway. Oh yeah. So we're like that gum. I mean, there's, there's nothing to this Bigfoot. And what's, what's, you know, what's the, uh, What's the big deal? I mean, we're going to solve it just like this. Well, we didn't. How many, how many years ago was that? Oh, God. <laughs> Ten years ago now? This is lock, it's got this locked up. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, didn't, <laughs> we didn't know how rare that kind of evidence really was. And, you know, after we went back and looked at the footage that we had shot, I was like, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful. <laughs> I am horrendous. So some of the best evidence that I have ever seen, uh, if like the physical evidence, other than capturing something on video, we weren't able to use because it was just horrible. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> so. Uh, it reminds me of uh, that Wolf of Wall Street quaalude scene where they thought they were doing all this crazy stuff and they were just mm -hmm. on the ground. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, I was so embarrassed looking at it. I was like, Brent, I'm not showing that to anybody ever, <laughs> ever, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, long story short, there's a whole lot to making things entertaining and being Being, uh, uh, you have to train to, uh, to, to be presentable, I guess, on camera. Mm -hmm. And you, which was doubly hard for me because I, you know, I have a, I have a speech impediment that uh, I have to overcome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for many years when I was a kid, I had to, you know, deal with that speech impediment. And, you know, it's doubly hard for me. So, I'd say you've done uh, a pretty good job. I mean, I've just in the I've seen the Downey Booger. Obviously, we watch mm -hmm. it twice a week in our house because <laughs> it's it's. I know I know it's it's. I know it's entertaining enough for the kids, mm -hmm. and it's always funny to see people. You oh, know, are they throwing like, popcorn at me when I'm on yeah. TV? You're like, hey, well, there is, he is. Well, <laughs> well, the the little one sleeps like in our bedroom with us in mm -hmm. like her in her crib in there. She's four. I say crib. She weighs 40 pounds for God's sake, but uh, <laughs> she's, mm -hmm. she wants to watch Bigfoot or Mothman. Sometimes I'll just put that on because mm -hmm. I know how to put her to sleep. No, I'm just kidding. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, no, but, but like in the, and even the trailer to the uh, LBL, like you can tell it almost, I mean, it's history channel quality. Mm -hmm. Just a, oh, a couple oh, of scenes. Good, so yeah. yeah. 
it, it, it'll be it'll be History Channel quality as far as uh, you know. Brent does fantastic work. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean he's a professional. It's it's what he does for a living. You know, he works at uh, I'm not going to say where he works, but he works at a TV station, and he does editing for a living. So he's a professional in, in the field, and mm-hmm. he does a fantastic job. Uh, sometimes I stress him out a little bit because, you know, I'm like, hey, let's make a change on something, you know, and he's like, what? And he gets all stressed out and everything. But, um, you know, because it's hours and hours and hours of editing. I, oh, yeah. You know, I look at it like it's a magic wand, just poof, you know, and there it Gotta is. Go back in and just rip up the rip up the carpet and try again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I messaged him last night. Yeah. Just to have him. Uh, I was in a guest, guest, guest finding mood. I get in these little. ADHD hyper focus when I start just reaching out to any guest I can think of. Mm-hmm. So I reached I reached out to him. I think it'd be pretty cool. I noticed we he had a, a couple of guest. friends. Yeah, he he would be a good guest. He's uh he's very well spoken. Uh he's mm-hmm. had a lot of experiences along with me. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he's had all the same experiences that I've had. Um I will say that when we first started, I saw things that he didn't see. Uh, particularly when it came to the orbs, uh, that's still a little bit of a mystery to me because they were right in front of us. And, uh, you know, I was a bit stunned when I first started seeing mm-hmm. orbs because I'd never heard of an orb. And I, I was like, hey, what's that little glowy thing right out there, you know? <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here looking and, you know, and, and it's pretty bright. You know, they're the bright as, as a flashlight. And I'm like, hey, Brent, what's that over there? And he's like, what? And where? <laughs> you know, it was right there. He's where? There? Where? There? And he couldn't see it for the for the life of him. He couldn't see it, um, but I could. And eventually, though, he did. He got to where he started to be able to see the orbs. Now I have no idea what that's all about. Yeah. Um, but that's... it actually, but that really happened. So. Yeah, and, he was the one you know, that, he had the vibration story too, didn't he? Yes. The guttural. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I could feel, I could feel that too. In, mm-hmm. in the LVL. Uh, and I understand, but I understand what happened to Brent. I really do. I understand it. And, um, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say some good things about him real, real fast. Do it. When we were at the LBL and this thing started growling, mm-hmm. um, you you could feel it inside your body. I mean, your whole body just vibrated. It was like being close to somebody in a car playing a really loud bass, where, you know, where you could feel the bass mm-hmm. or fireworks where you could feel the fireworks going off. Every time it growled, you could feel it. And it... It was startling, extremely startling. Uh, now, Brent may have been zapped or whatever whatever mm-hmm. happened to him. Um, he went into a terror attack. Uh, so we collectively was trying to get him to calm down. Eventually, he does calm down and he, he picks the camera up. And he starts filming. He starts doing his job. I can't say enough when, you know, how proud I was of him of overcoming that much terror and coming back and doing your job and doing it well. You know, he, he, mm-hmm. he filmed very well. He was, he got something very special on camera that night. I'm going to save that for the film. <laughs> don't spoil but, it not on yeah. here not with all 10 people watching <laughs> <laughs> well um but you know it's uh he overcome something that is very difficult for a lot of people to overcome and that that took bravery you know so i, I do mm-hmm. want to commend him for doing that he, he did a really good job doing that hearing him describe it, like you could tell it wasn't just a willy nilly run of the mill paranormal experience. Like he thought he was, he thought it was over for him. Right. And, and, and we he was, all he thought did. He was dead. We all did. 
He's not the only one. You know, you talk to Adam, he thought the same thing. You know, I thought the same thing, but it's, you know, you know, I, I had a camera. We had security with us. We did have security with us. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in our security, you know, he, he, we were always talking to him and he said that's the first time he's ever drawn, drawn his weapon. It, you know, he drew his weapon. Uh, so we had to, the, the weapon was drawn and it was out and we were prepared for battle. You know, we really wow. were. Um, so we coalesced into a small group and we was going to, it was, the thing was not intimidated by four, four grown men, four good sized men, mm -hmm. not intimidated at all. Um, so, you know, I, I look back onto that, um, I look back onto the, that encounter, um, uh, and I had to come to terms with some things because I saw it. Um, so, so while, while you're taking a drink, so so don't spoil the film. But you yeah. did see an entity or a being. Yeah, I saw it was a Bigfoot. I, don't know. I mean, okay, I didn't want to tell you it's a Bigfoot. I, I saw. Wanna, it. I didn't know how far you wanted to go, it's like, but you did see. So you saw. The yeah, um, I, I I tried to get it on camera with my camera, but yeah. the cameras that we were using were such short range cameras yeah. that I don't think it had the range to be able to get, it. even though it was on the other side of the truck. I, I don't think it had that kind of range or they, they don't have that kind of range. Um, I did have a long range camera on me or in a, in our midst, but I didn't have it. So uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, however, we do have some very, very special footage with the long range camera. I'm not going to go too much into that, but it's very mm -hmm. special. But, we, you know, I, I've had a lot of encounters and we've caught lots of things on video. You know, I've seen things on video where it, with, I would consider Bigfoot, but to sit there or to stand there and see it with your own eyes is, mm -hmm. is, uh, is, 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 very troublesome, you know, the first time you actually see it with your own eyes. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, it was just standing there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't see any eyes. I couldn't see anything on the face at all. Cause it was so just, it was so dark. I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the creature itself was just black. And the, the night itself was dark. There wasn't even any moon out. So it, it was pretty dark out. Um, but, uh, you know, so for Brent and myself, we went from being high level believers mm -hmm. because of evidence, you know, you can hear rain out on the, on, on the roof and believe that it's raining, Yeah, but you don't know it until you actually see it for yourself. Until you're wet. Right? Yeah. So, um, that that's what happened to both of us. We we went from being believers to knowers. So you had the paradigm shift, like yeah, yeah. I always wonder what that's like because I I feel like I'm on the verge of it, just mm -hmm. messing around like I do. But mm -hmm. not, I don't know if I'm trying to have it. Maybe one day, maybe a ten seconds. Um, I don't. Well, when when you do have it, it uh, you go through a rationalization process. Um. You first try to explain it away. Mm -hmm. uh, like you, a stages you know, of grief almost, I've heard. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you're like questioning yourself. Like, uh, did, did I really see that? You know what I mean? You know, or if I did, was it just my imagination? Because you know, I went through that with the orbs, you know. Mm -hmm. Because the orbs was that same kind of paradigm shift because I was looking yeah. at something that wasn't supposed to be there. Um, and then finally it comes to acceptance, you know, and then when it comes to acceptance, you're changed, mm -hmm. you know, your, your whole, your whole perspective on life has changed. Uh, the only thing that didn't, uh, that I didn't have a paradigm shift was the first time I saw a ghost. 
Oh, we were out Bigfoot hunting and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, both Janice and I saw an Indian on a horse just materialize in a field and it rode all the way through the field. And it, when it got to the wood line, it uh, disappeared. So I was like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> but I've seen a lot of strange stuff by then, though. Where was that at? The horse? It was at McIntosh Reserve in Georgia. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know if a ghost would be a paradigm shift for me either, because I'm like, it's not something for me to believe they're there or not, because I, it's one thing mm -hmm. I 100% believe is it happens. Like I experience, I experience like angel numbers and things like that. So something's doing that. So I know mm -hmm. just the next step up as a person. I've been to a couple investigations. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. the Bigfoot thing, that's, that's the Holy Grail. Now, what interests me in, in the orb thing is like, is it like when you're, when you see them, do you think like it's some, a person coming down the road with a flashlight or a car, but you realize it's a river or like you're in a swamp and it can't possibly be anything else. Mm -hmm. And then you see it do some crazy stuff and it can't do that. Mm -hmm. That'd be where it would get you. Mm -hmm. That'd be where it would get yeah. me when I saw it do some crazy, mm -hmm. like up in the tree acrobatics. Yeah. Uh, now there's different types. There's some that are very quick. You know, mm -hmm. you'll see them for a second or two. And I know there's people out there that's going to say, oh, that ain't nothing but a lightning bug. Well, not, no, not in February. <laughs> no. And you can right. tell that there's a color difference, too. Yeah, like, there, there are. There are. There's, there's color differences. Yeah. Uh, so there's some that are quick. There are. Now, the ones that we, the one that we filmed in uh, the Downey Booger stayed there all night. I mean, it would have different variations in brightness, uh, but it stayed there all night. I mean, it for hours, it stayed there. So we've got these that last for a very, very long time. Uh, I took my son out one time, and this is when I first started seeing them. I took him to uh, Fort Mountain, Georgia. And we were there, and we saw uh, right on cue these orbs come up, right? And... Mm -hmm. You know, they're about the size of your fist or so. And, you know, he, he starts to get freaked out a little bit. He's like, okay, Dad, it's time to go back to camp. So we started <laughs> walking back to camp. And, you know, lo and behold, I said, you know, here they come. They're following us. He's like, uh, Dad, they're following us. <laughs> Dad, they're following us. I said, it's okay, son. I said, they'll, they'll stop when we get up here to the clearing. And, you know, usually that, that's what happens. But, uh, you know, he... He saw for his, his, you know, for himself that uh, the orbs and, and things that aren't supposed to exist, exist. Uh, so if you've got, if you actually want to go out and see orbs, go to Fort Mountain State Park and sometime in October and you'll see them. Absolutely. Just floating around. Mm -hmm. They like, go up in the you air, the they stay like. Go in the woods and uh, near the power lines, you'll see them. And they, they've, you know, uh, we, we had one that we interacted with for uh, a long time and, uh, it would actually interact with us. We saw, I saw a train of them that, uh, you know, we were headed back to camp and, you know, we were going one way and we, we met these other orbs that was coming with us. And I say orbs because there was about six or seven of them. And they, we, we stopped and just watched them just float by, you know. Uh, really? And, so they're just like coming through the trees like Boy Scouts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And, you, you know, there was like, there was like a train of them. And I was sitting there, uh, I said to the other, other two people with me, I was like, <laughs> is this really happening? You know, and we just watched in amazement as they just, you know, just floated by and then went and did their own thing. Uh, so we see them quite often. Uh, we, it, we've got them in the film. Uh, we saw them at the LBL. Yeah. So uh, they're, they're in the film and we're there. It's in color. So you'll be able to see the color of them. Well, I ain't got so. color. I ain't got color TV kind of money. <laughs> I just I just work in IT. I can't be. I, I'm still black and white. Well, uh, now were you doing? Were you doing shooting for that documentary when we met up there with the Wood Walkers uh, meet and greet? No. Right. Well, I, I tried to, uh, but unfortunately, every bit of that footage 
was corrupted. Mm. Every bit of it. Coincidence. Uh, well, it, yeah. it happens. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it, that it seems happens. to be a big thing. Yeah, well, you, you know, I, I find out that it happens more often than not. So, um, I, it, it, it was, uh, it, I expected. It, it, like, for example, in the sequence where we had the Bigfoot encounter, we had two fully charged cameras, and they should have been lasted for hours and hours. So I got about 25 to 30 minutes out of those cameras before they died, and that's it. So, uh, battery drainage is very, very, very common. File corruption is also common. Uh, mm -hmm. Camera malfunction is common. That's one of the, another one of the reasons why it took so long to make uh, the Downey Booger. You know, it just yeah. You know, we thought we had great footage. We'd come back, and it's been corrupted somehow. Even in the footage where we got the thing crawling between us and the orb, that mm -hmm. file is actually corrupted. The audio on it doesn't work. Um, and out of all of the footage we took with that camera, that's the only segment where something was corrupted in. Uh, also, what is not on the film was I had a thermal camera with me, and I caught something crawling down the hill from the opposite direction. And it went to a log and kind of pushed up on the log. And then it kind of went back down and then it freaking just disappeared just from the thermal camera. And I'm like, yes, I got it. It's on camera. I got it. I was recording. Now that file was corrupted. <laughs> Wasn't able to use it. And so, how do you just bounce your equipment off a tree when that happens? <laughs> that, I would just, I couldn't do it. Or I guess I could, but I'm just saying that's it's it, it's frustrating to say the least. Um, it's very frustrating. Uh, but you learn to live with it. You know, if, if you're going to be serious about making a documentary, and it's going to be real, not set up or fake, or you know, like some other shows that are out there. You know, we don't have the budget to fake it. So everything we do has to be real. <laughs> so so uh, you just have to learn to live with some of the oddities that come with filming. You think that has a lot to do with the fact that every Bigfoot picture is blurry for the most part? Is like they screw it up? Very well in, could in the be. Midst of could, if, you know, very well could be that, you know, they have such a, uh, a frequency vibration that it messes with our electronics. Appreciate that there, Sonny. Hit me. Sonny done bought me a coffee for the week. Yay. Hey, yay. Thanks, Sonny. Sonny. So, yeah, I get, I get in arguments all the time and it's more of a, I'll get, I'll get your question at Christmas, uh, at Christmas. I'll get to your question in a minute, Chris. My, I just had corrupted speech. Good Lord, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> but I get in, in arguments kind of for fun with the coalition of the critical thinkers of Bigfoot mm -hmm. because, you know, one of my, one of my favorite witnesses is uh, Mr. Randy from Minnesota. And that's the one that Jason Kinsey and the she squatters went to. And I know him personally, he'll call me every so often and tell me about something that happened on his property. But mm -hmm. I brought, this is just a particular example of an argument. This is one of thousands I've had, but <laughs> he said, he said, how does, a, how does, how do you explain a great ape? sustaining on 40 acres and i'm like dude why are you doing this right now <laughs> you know why you know like they they can't get over the what, what we call them, apers mm -hmm. the apers just can't get over it and i think once you get over the hump i mean you're already in this realm why not just let it wash over you yeah that they're possibly not a great ape at all exactly uh you, you know when we first started i was like in the ape category you know, that yeah. it was a, that it, it was an ape. And then I went to uh, that they were possibly a type of human, um, you, you know, kind of like Neanderthal or yeah. Magnum, whatever. Like a lost, a lost version. Yeah. A lost version of human. Um, and then some of the things that started happening really made me even question that, you know, <clears throat> like when I saw the Bigfoot, it, it moved from in front of the truck to, the wood line and uh, unnaturally fast. It was unnatural. 
you know, uh, I don't know anything that could move that fast. So, I mean, that to me was, was concerning in itself, you know, that if this thing wanted to hurt us, it could, because it, there, there, I mean, you couldn't draw your weapon fast enough to, uh, to do any kind of damage to this thing. And it makes you wonder if, if a weapon would even do any damage. Exactly. Like the guy you said, uh, your security had the, mm-hmm. I'm supposing like a 45 or something of that size had to be. Mm-hmm. And like, what would it have done? I mean, if. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I do know that if he had succeeded in uh, harming one, there was another one to our left because it yeah. was throwing rocks at us. Like they're like velociraptors. There's never just one. Yeah. You, you know, it, that was. You know, when we told Adam about it, you know, he's from Britain. I always kid him about being from Australia, but, you know, he's from England. Uh, but Adam was like, oh, my God, they're flanking us. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, he was. They're flanking us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, but but he's right, though. They were using military tactics. You know, they was using one as a distraction for the other. And there may have been more there, you know, that we just didn't, didn't see. But, uh, I do know that, uh, (laughs) I'm sorry. I just saw a comment from one of your patrons that, uh, made me laugh. Is it that one? Yes. (laughs) I figured there was some inside joke there. It is. (laughs) I was, I didn't know what it, I'm not going to get between that. Well, you, you yeah. know, the first time I met Kristen, uh, we were filming for this film mm-hmm. and it was cold out and I had my, my jacket and I eat quite often and I had some oranges in my jacket and, you know, being a Southern gentleman, I, whenever I took an orange out, you know, I offered one to anybody that was around. She happened to be around and <laughs> I'm like, Hey, want an orange? <laughs> <She> <laughs> <laughs> she was so polite, like, no. That's how no. you get a sign in your yard right there. Right. You're going to end up on a, on a watch list. It is. <laughs> but yeah, I was just being nice, you know, but, you know, it, it's our thing now. She's yeah, I, I saw that. I'm like, there's something up with that comment, but I don't know what it is. I'm just going to put it up and see what happens. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so I don't know any of y'all's Tennessee fans. So I don't know what's up with it. Oh, my goodness. Well, my friend Chris but, yeah, was on here. That, that's a thing. He was wondering why Bigfoot and Spirit Strange equipment, but yeah, we don't we don't know. Yeah, don't know. Um, during the filming of this, uh, the Land Between the Lakes, we were, we were actually at the meadow, and we, there was one particular spot where uh, a lot of our equipment just kept draining. We would it would be it would be full, you know, full batteries, and we move to a spot, and then it get it drains down to zero and then we move on down and then it gets full again. It just powers right back up. And that's happened to mul- to us on multiple occasions, many, many, many different occasions. Mm-hmm. Like I know why ghosts do it. Cause they have to use that to manifest mm-hmm. to, but it doesn't make any sense why the uh, mm-hmm. high strangeness in general would, and but it just comes what, back. What, it doesn't go away. Right. And, and it sure doesn't. Um, and this was even in the daytime that these were happening. So, uh, you, you know, I don't know why. Um, every time we've hit like an orb with with flashlights or anything, they've disappeared. Every time, you know, we, we don't shine. You, if you shine a light on an orb, they just poof, they, they're gone. It take they'll come back eventually after a while. But for whatever reason, it seems like light shuts them down. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have noticed that's one particular aspect that uh, that is that comes with with seeing orbs is that a light will shut them down. One thing I don't I haven't tested yet is if infrared light does the same thing to them. Mm-hmm. I haven't tested that yet. But I do know our physical light shuts them down. Now, have you ever, this is not kind of parallel thinking, but have you ever dealt with uh, 
trying to invoke Jesus or anything around them. I see them with that because I know people do that with the abduction cases and they say they invoke the name of Jesus and it shuts down the abduction. I don't no. know if anybody's ever done that around a Bigfoot. And that's for the chat because I know I got a lot of people in the chat that have dealt with these things. Like, what does uh, what does the Jesus um, kind of like the power of Christ compels you? Does that have any effect on the phenomenon? And I got Kristen and uh, Michael mm-hmm. X and Flat Rock in here, so they make an offer something there. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm curious. I'm exploring all aspects here. Yeah, um, you know, I have a little bit of a different take on, I guess, the spiritual world than most organized religions say you know so i just don't invoke something that i don't necessarily believe in Mm -hmm. it's not that i don't believe like jesus lived because i firmly do it's just to have issues with organized religions and how they've corrupted files and documents and whatnot i'm getting Uh, there I, i personally don't do that uh i have asked them to leave us alone like when they've started throwing rocks at us and Brent started getting kind of freaked out and I was like, Hey, Hey, can you please stop throwing rocks? That's not nice. And they Mm -hmm. stopped, you know, there was one time where I was going to have to have back surgery and I went to the woods and, uh, I asked if they could heal my back. And when I went back to the doctor the next week, the herniated disc had disappeared or the herniation had disappeared. It withdrew back into my body. So, you know, I, that sometimes happens, but I, I don't know if that had anything to do with, uh, yeah, with anything. Else. But, 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 you know, I'd heard, I'd heard from others that, uh, some of the beings out there in the woods have the ability to heal. Yeah. That's not the first time I've heard it either. Uh, guy from Missouri took his terminal sister out there. Sister. He never did finish the story about what happened though. He said she was terminal and took her out there. And you know, he said a big male came up in front of him and two or three did the flank thing around him. And Mm -hmm. he asked for healing and then changed the subject. I'm like, well, it's been like two years now. I never, I may have him back just to finish the story. I mean, I don't want to know like, like, Mm -hmm. dude, what's the, I mean, did they, I mean, I feel like that was a big part of your point you were making. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it, that's a heck of a cliffhanger there. You yeah, know? I'm like it's been it's been two presidents now since that's happened. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, well, I mean, that's a true story, though. I mean, I went out to the woods, and you know, yeah. we started having an encounter, and I asked for my back to be healed because I was having a whole lot of trouble with it, and sure enough. You know, I went, I went to the doctor the next week for surgery and they took one more look and it was the herniated disc wasn't there. Hmm. I'm about to go to the woods now. I got one that's, uh, I've had a numb toe for like a year and a half now. Hmm. I, 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 I know the feeling. I'm, I mean, that was years ago. That was uh, eight years ago or so. Uh, a couple of years after I'd started doing this. So, uh, I'm kind of back at it now where my back's I've got another, you know, that herniated disc is back. So I know the feeling brother. I just learned that whenever I feel it going on, I just ice my spine right mm. there, right, th- right above uh, my butt, I guess you would say that's where mm-hmm. all the, the pinching starts. Mm-hmm. And I know all about it. Yeah, it's, it's rough. I don't man sciatica. I was doing jujitsu pretty regular and I was getting close to getting like, a belt promotion and that happened. I'm like, I haven't been back since. I'm like, I do not want to be crippled yeah, just, in, just for it. an Instagram post. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not. You can always yeah. fake it. Yep. I can always get beat up in a, beat up in a bar fight. So saying I with the fake cauliflower ear or something like that. <laughs> That's how you tell those guys are badass. Mm-hmm. Hit the cauliflower so you, ear. Yeah. You were saying earlier about going to the, uh, the, the park in Georgia. Mm-hmm. is is there like a like there's tons of those kind of things around the south in our state and georgia and tennessee and mm-hmm. just throw a rock you're at a big green spot on the map that may or may not be what do you look for in those potential areas like uh cool. cellar dirt dirt cellar mountain and well yeah i mean what do you look for to try to find the orbs to begin with like orbs or orts orts oh you said orts. Quartz. What's orts. quartz 
Oh, quartz. Crystal. I thought you said orts. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell is an ort? I'm sorry. <laughs> crystal quartz. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Start looking on the ground that. for crystal quartz. If you hmm. if there's a lot of it on the ground, there's a pretty high chance that you're going to have orb activity there. If you go mm. to the meadow, you start looking around the meadow, you're going to see quartz. There's lots of it. You go to uh, Fort Mountain, lots of quartz. You go over to um, McIntosh Reserve, lots of quartz. Interesting. Yeah, I grew up, you know, my county where I'm from, it's, it's all mountainous over there. And mm -hmm. every everybody's got limestone with the quartz on the, because limestone and quartz are the same thing pretty much. Most and I, f I found a piece. It's at a popular, popular hike. It's called the Never Sink Pit. We always call it the Never Hole. The Never Hole, Never Hole. I, the people come here from God knows where up north. Oh, it's the Never Sink Pit. I'm like, you mean the Never Hole? There's snakes <laughs> up there. I, I took an old boy up there one time. He goes, where is that? I can't find it. Do I need a permit? I'm like, what? where are you from, son? And uh, I found a piece of quartz up there. You know, this big around. Mm -hmm. And I left it there because you know leave leave only footprints, take only pictures, but right. I picked it up and looked at it. I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. I guarantee you somebody took it though. Oh, probably. Because it was huge. Yeah. I set it I set it up where somebody could find it and look at it like it was cool and it was gone mm -hmm. the next time. Well, since somebody's Subaru. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that that's what that's what I look for. That's one of the things that we've noticed that's been common to <clears throat> all of our hunting spots. Quartz. Quartz. Mm-hmm. So that is true. I mean, everywhere you just described has plenty of it. But yeah, uh, the downy booger took five or six years to complete. Five years. Uh, we had, yeah, we had one version oh of it done and then uh, we had a soft release on it on YouTube. And I was like, I don't like this version of it. Um, so we re edited it and came out with another version. And uh, we were able to put it on Tubi TV and uh, lots of other streaming platforms. You can uh, get it in Walmart.com and Best Buy.com. All these, uh, you know, the the dot com places where you get DVDs. So I, I was really buying. proud. Yeah, I was really proud of the way uh, Booger uh, performed. Um, and like all people, I was I was probably my own worst critic. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, oh, God, I don't know. I don't want to watch myself. But, uh, you know, I I've gotten lots of positive feedback about it. it you, you know, one good thing about our our films is that everything is real. You, you, you know, we don't set anything up except for recreations, of course. I mean, duh, I don't have a time yeah. machine. <laughs> the, re the reenactments. Those are fake. right. Yeah, just reenactments is, you know you know it's a reenactment but our investigations mm -hmm. are all real um, reenactments with the horse yeah yeah, yeah. It, well no that the uh well at the very beginning with the two kids on the horse yeah th that's mm -hmm. reenactment but the scene where we were coming off a mountain and there was two ladies on the, with the horses there that was mm -hmm. real that really? was absolutely real yeah oh okay let's say that looked that looked crazy yeah it, it was absolutely real the uh that was the the time that we went we went up the mountain and we had four cameras on us and three of them just died when we got up to the top of the camera and one would go on and off on and off and then I had a compass on my uh, a walking stick and it would it wouldn't act right now of course it was a cheap compass looking back mm -hmm. on things but still um, so when we started to descend from the hill there was these two ladies on horses and one of them kept looking up the hill behind us. And it just freaks out, you know, it just, you, you know, it, it really reminded me of the story of the Downy Booger mm -hmm. because it was just terrified to, to go forward, you know, and it, at one point it was got so rough that uh, we thought it was going to buck the lady off of her horse. So she did have to get off of it and physically have to nudge it on down the road or on down the trail. That's incredible. But, yeah, but no, that was a that was that really happened. You know, that was real. See, I thought since it, the first one was a reenactment that it was just kind of like a demonstration again. No, no, it was real. Wow, I'm going to go back and watch that again tonight. Yeah, that was I'm absolutely not, real. I'm yeah, paying every, rent this month. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, everything else other than the obvious reenactment yeah. at the very beginning and the reenactment where Paul was telling his story and you know how to reenactment of, uh, you know, yeah. a hunter scene and Jason's story, we you know back when we had a reenactment of him being a kid, you know, other than those reenactments, everything else actually really happened. It was all real. You know, the, uh, the Man. horses, the way they reacted to whatever it was behind us up on the hill was just, it was unsettling, you know? Yeah, because they, they were like spooked, like it creepy. Yeah, make they you were. They were. Or at least that one was, you know, mm -hmm. it, it like, you know, it just stopped at attention, you know, like it, you could tell that it wanted to turn and bolt the other way. You know, the back, the back one, of the way it came. The other one didn't give a shit. It was like. Yeah, well, it was, it was dumb. It's just standing there. It was special. It was like that horse on family, a horse on a family guy with the crooked eyes. <laughs> 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 like he's here. Yeah. 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 Have, you, have you ever, I think we talked about this the last time we hung out, not counting the conference, but have you ever talked, looked into getting like an old school Patterson Gimlin style camera? Like the hand cranks and springs. Mm -hmm. Um, what, you're talking about one that uh, doesn't yeah, that, require just a, electricity. Yeah, just kind of like kind of like that movie. Nope, mm -hmm. you have to turn it yourself. Yeah, I, I I don't I wouldn't know how to edit that. Yeah, I think you'd <laughs> have God. to have a, I think you'd have to have scissors and uh, tape. Yeah, but yeah, still, yeah. like they're all over. They're all over. Uh, you know, it's not a bad eBay. idea. You know, I. I, I, I talk. I, I kind of joke about it, but it's not a bad idea because it doesn't have any mm -hmm. uh, any, any electronic uh, uh, parts to it. It's just you know, mm -hmm. everything's all analog. Yep. So it, it would actually be a very good idea if you know. But you can only shoot in the daytime. You can't shoot at night with them. Yeah, can't do that. But that's what, what, what you, you know, because of the IR, we wasn't having any luck here in, in the Downey Booger with IR. So what we did is we went and rented a real high end camera that could virtually see in the dark. And that's what we were filming that orb with. You know, it mm -hmm. it didn't have any kind of projected light to it, you know, Uh and I think that's where we accidentally got that Bigfoot on camera. It, it just, you know, we pressed the button and there it was. And I, th <clears throat> I think it something real. Yeah, I think it realized it was finally on camera and it didn't know what to do. It was like, oh, crap. You know, it kind of goes this way, this way, and then eventually all, off camera. And, but we didn't see it with our eyes. You know, the camera saw it mm -hmm. and it actually tries to focus on it. But we didn't see it with our eyes. And so there was nothing for it to detect as you were coming up. Right. Nothing being yeah. broadcast. You know, and, so and, uh, sometimes maybe okay. do, going low tech might be the, uh, or extremely high tech. You, you know, I would really be interested in getting my hands on some of the military uh, FLIR. Yeah. You know, eventually our technology is going to catch up with whatever they are. And mm -hmm. at least a little bit. I mean, mm -hmm. I suspect that anything that can, clipping it out to that degree is always going to have a leg up on whatever we can do until, mm -hmm. until we get so far up, we become you know like gods ourself. And that's when the world will end anyway. So it doesn't matter. But, oh, of course. But that's interesting. You say that I ha that high tech one that had such a big uh, aperture that it could see in the dark. Yeah. Yeah. It had a ISO of like 460. Yeah. Thousand, that's incredible. Yeah. That's washed out to the max degree. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> ISO like 3200 ain't shit compared to that. No, I'm saying, that, you know. That's incredible. Okay, so yeah, so it it kind of lends me to make a hypothesis that they they let their guard down at night and just look for those kind of things. Mm -hmm. that, Since that, you didn't that, have it. I think they can actually see into the IR range. Yeah, oh, of course. You know? So if you're out there with a night vision camera and you're just, you know, you're pulling your camera, you all you're doing you is You might as well have a spotlight. spotlight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, might as well have a spotlight. Oh, so, yeah. Lots of uh, things to see IR. Yeah. So, you, you know, the, in, in the making of the booger, we, we, we left off the IR, you, you know, and put out that high-end 
camera and there was no moon. Lord help us if there would have been a moon, you know, uh, some sort of moon to actually see something with. You could have backed it down to a hundred thousand. There was yeah. a moon. Yeah. <laughs> something modest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you'd actually been able to see something. Uh, now in the making of the land between the lakes, where our equipment gets a little bit better and where we, and, you know, I've got a, a full spectrum camera. The mm-hmm. full spectrum camera is great, particularly with a little bit of moonlight. And this is one particular segment in the film. It, it, we go back to Fort Mountain and we're walking down a trail and I'm going to experiment with a glow stick. So I'll take a glow stick and I stick up in a tree and it's kind of high up as I could reach. And then we continue on walking. And I've got my full spectrum camera with me. And I, I try not to look into the display because it kills your night vision. So I'm just kind mm-hmm. of panning around at random, you know, while we're there. And it seemed like it was a quiet night for us. But on our way back, I did notice that the glow stick was on the ground. So, you know, I picked up the glow stick and didn't think much about it. However, when I started to go over the footage, you can see something standing next to the glow stick and it's about six or eight inches taller than the glow stick and it's standing there looking at us the the moon is behind it it's perfectly silhouetted you know and as when i go frame by frame you can kind of see it you know kind of like mm. do this he's kind of waving kind of like that and it is so you know again we didn't see it with our eyes you know, I thought that it was a very quiet night, but there's clearly something standing there watching us. And it I don't know how the glow stick got on the ground, but I put it up there pretty good. Uh, but you can see mm-hmm. the glow stick in the uh, in, in the footage, in the frames, and you can s- clearly see something standing there. And, it, and there's a clear line of sight between where we were and where the glow stick was. So hmm. even though it's probably 200 feet, maybe 150 feet away, uh, that, but there's still a good clear line of sight. So it's not that far in the dark with that kind of equipment. Right. 100 feet. So you think right. it knocked the glow stick? You think it might have tore the glow stick off? Like, it, it, Yeah, it, it probably did. And it probably played with it and it fell off, you know. Or it could have fell by itself. You know, I, yeah. I can't say that for sure, but uh, you can sure see something standing there next to it. And that, you know, that'll be in the film. And it's, you can see for yourself, it, it's standing there. I'm kind of fired up about this LBL film. It's fantastic. Yeah. The trailer's and, good. The trailer's like a good, good movie, like some of the stuff it shows. Well, I can tell you the first few minutes are already done. It starts out with a bang. Good. It starts out like a freaking horror movie. It's got a you hook. Know, it's it's fantastic. We we've spent money on like music and a few other bells and whistles about it that, that makes the viewing you know better. It's more entertaining, but the content in it is just top notch, absolutely top notch. What kind of what kind of a format like uh, outline did you go with? Like you were telling me about how, you know, you shoot one interview and another interview, and you go on site. Mm-hmm. Did you do something like that with this one? Um. Well, what we have decided to do with our documentaries is we shoot all of our footage first. Uh, we works. don't even do storyboards or anything in the very beginning. We might have a general outline, say, "Hey, let's do A, B, and C." But we don't, like when we went to the LBL, we came across um, the Casey Jones Distillery. That was a ready-made story for us that we didn't expect to have. And we spent a good time, a good bit about, a good bit of time there filming at the Casey Jones Distillery. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic story. It really adds to the richness of, uh, in history of the location, you know, and it, it's things like that, that we pick up along the way that I yeah. think really just makes our story for us, you know, and then when we get all of our footage done, we like, Hey, you know, we can, we can do 
we can sprinkle this one interview throughout the entire mm -hmm. interview because it has relevance to multiple parts of the film. Oh yeah. You know, uh, you know, so there's not a certain way that we have the film that we want to do pre predetermined. The film makes itself. Okay. Well, I always thought that's the way you would want to do it and not tell a story with an agenda. And then other people are like, no, you right. want to start a story and then mm -hmm. shoot what I'm like, that's, that's kind of like, to write, doing a movie with a narrative instead yeah, of that, that's a narration making yeah. like a factual something that happened that's a narration okay. you know when we did the booger uh, we ignored a lot of the strange things that was going on with us and that was more of an a narration we had very very tunnel vision you know we're like we're doing bigfoot you know uh we're not doing orbs we're doing bigfoot we're not doing ghosts we're doing bigfoot we're not doing anything else we're we're not doing aliens. We're doing Bigfoot. Well, I, I think, you know, I would be remiss to continue on that kind of strategy I, because when you go out and you actually see just weird stuff when you're investigating and it's worth mentioning what you experience, you know, because you have all these people say, Oh, I heard a witch out in the woods, you know, here are these weird cackles. just. <laughs> Well, that happens. It happened to Brent. You know, uh, it happened. Yeah, these cackles. Um, in our film, we catch uh, disembodied voices ourselves on camera. I say it, we caught it on camera. You, everybody that was there in the, at the investigation is accounted for, for, for the either, you can either see their mouth or they're talking or whatever, and you hear this other noise that comes on camera and it, it's a disembodied voice and actually janice had heard it several times throughout the night so these things do happen so we wanted to explore some of these things you know uh to see if and if we caught anything we was going to just show the world show what we experience <clears throat> and that's you that's essentially what we did that we didn't ignore anything this time. Uh, mm -hmm. th th there was one situation where it scared one of our crew guy people to death. Um, they really freaked out and I, I don't know how much in detail we're going to go into that particular situation, <clears throat> but uh, the crew won't go back to this particular location because of oh. that. <laughs> That's pretty, uh, pretty uh, significant then. It was. It was quite sig significant. And uh, like I say, I, we, we, you know, they're not going to go back. So I'll go back because me, either I'm stupid or whatever. I don't know. But I'll go back. But they won't. Like when you experienced the uh, sighting of a uh, Bigfoot, did it scare you like you think you'd be scared seeing a ghost? No. I hear that a lot. I mean, I just, I don't I know stunned. how I feel. Yeah. I was stunned. Uh, I, I didn't know what to do. You, you know, I had a camera in my hand and I was working on pushing the buttons to, to get record. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking up. I have the camera and it's pointed down and I'm looking up. Now, this seemed like an eternity. It seemed like everything was in slow motion. You know. Um, have you ever like, you know, been riding a bike or on a you know, at the playground, you fell off, and it seems like as you were falling, everything's in slow motion. Mm -hmm. Or getting attacked by a dog on a bike. It all feels like know, it just takes forever. Whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. that, just, that's exactly how it how it was for me. It, it was in slow motion. Um, and I was stunned. And I, I, was, I was speechless, and I didn't know what to do. But then I remembered, hey, I got a camera. I got to do my job. So I pull up the camera and I start looking in the viewfinder. And that was my mistake, looking in the dadgum viewfinder because it killed my <laughs> night vision. I couldn't see anything after that. Oh, yeah. You're basically just sitting there blind in the dark. Yep. And that, you know, that worried me a little bit more, you know, because I was I couldn't see before I could see that. Then I then I couldn't see after that. Um, so I, I was kind of pointing and guessing, you know, with the camera for the most part of this encounter. 
but uh was i scared uh i wasn't scared i was stunned um i, I wouldn't say that i ever got scared no mm -hmm. i understand like i'm terrified of snakes no, oh, yeah. If, I was, if it had been a spider yeah. or a snake or something a spider. like that, I'd have been freaked out. <laughs> what, if, what if you just been seeing a Bigfoot back into a spider web, started screaming like a girl? <laughs> ah! <laughs> there's, just, there's just video of you running like hell because the spider's on you. It's in my hair. It's in my hair. Like Ace Ventura with, Ace Ventura with the bats. <laughs> I wonder how they get the, keep the keep Bigfoot's the watching you. You know? <laughs> the Bigfoot's like, what up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't you know, they, there's a ton of questions I have, you know. But I was I, I was saying like I'm terrified of snakes. But if I can see one like ten yards away, mm -hmm. and at the same time being terrified, I'm fascinated with them because they're cool to look at. Mm -hmm. Especially like a rattlesnake doing its thing. Yeah. I wonder if that's like how you'd feel about how you felt about big. I'm like, well, it's that far away, and like, oh, yeah. to an extent. I, I say it was very far away, but it. I mean, you know, it was at the front of the truck, and I'm at the back of the truck i'm you know, still thinking like 150 feet away that's oh, that's closer no. that's no. much closer yeah it was like that's different 15 feet away oh oh yeah okay so i, I was mixing my stories up yeah it was about 15 so it was right there away. yeah it was right there oh. on you yeah, okay scratch what i just said that's arm's length yeah you, you, <laughs> you know of course there was a truck between me and it but yeah you know uh i don't think it would have mattered much if it would <laughs> if it wanted to hurt you but uh, it, it was very close. Very, very close. Yeah, that's a lot closer than what I was thinking you would, you were sitting at. Slits. Slits like a... Bigfoot has eyes, slits like a cat. I don't know. Um, first I've heard of that. I yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I can say we got... When it was in front of the truck, the eyes were not glowing. However, when it retreated back into the woods, its eyes were glowing. Without light or by itself? Yeah, by itself. Yeah. So that's the one thing I can't get a solid answer on. Is is eye shine like a deer, like with the spotlight, and you just see it because it's there? Or is eye shine like a power they have that glows? You, you know, I, I've seen it like where it's, they just glow, you know. Um. That's what happened at, at the LBL anyway. That you it's know their cool. eyes just glowed. Uh, now th there was another instance where we was there the second time, and there was some weird stuff going on. And there there was eye shine that reflected back. Mm -hmm. What was that creature? I don't know. But it was the eye shine was about eight nine foot up next to a tree. Uh, was it a raccoon in a tree? Don't know. Uh, but it was high up. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a uh, shine, a uh, uh, reflection, and then it didn't glow with itself. But what I saw, it glowed. <laughs> it, it, but a hu what's humorous now, it wasn't humorous at the time, but it's humorous now. Uh, I went to the front of the <laughs> truck after... Uh, things kind of calmed down a little bit and I was wondering if you know the Bigfoots was still around mm -hmm. so I make this growl sound this Rawr! you know kind of sound myself and immediately I heard boom 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 it stomped like three times and, you know as it as it was stomping Brent you know was walking up to the front of the truck and uh, I said, hey, did you hear that? I said, yeah, it stomped. And uh, I said, uh, he said, what you do? I said, I growled. I said, I'm going to do it again. So I growled again. <laughs> Rawr, you, you know, and it stomped much closer. It was like really close to the edge of the wood line then. He looked over at me. He's like, you better stop doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Poor yeah, Brent, man. Like, okay, Brent, I agree with you this time. I'm going to stop. Because it's like know, shaggy, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was sort of pushing the envelope then, and uh, well, I, I didn't want to push it anymore because frankly, I didn't know what I was conveying to it. That's why I don't, yeah. I don't like to, to uh, yell and hoop and holler when I go out to the and uh, would knock, 
Yeah. Yeah. Because what are you saying to them? Yeah, it's like you don't know what's a mating call or not. Do exactly. they mate? Exactly. I mean, you don't want to be. You don't want to find out they mate the hard way. No pun exactly. intended. Or, or you, you know, might be gay Bigfoots or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you might find out exactly what the uh, sex panther actually smelled like. It smelled like Bigfoot's dick. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, I, I, I just make it a point not to do that anymore mm-hmm. because you, you know they know you're there. If you're out in the woods, they know you're there. And if they want to, you know, to visit you, they'll visit you. So I, the only thing that you can really do when you yell is you'll hear something off in a distance and, you know, you'll get hollers and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. They'll do that by themselves. You know, if you just sit there and wait, Uh, and this is one thing that I would, uh, if you want a, an encounter to last, uh, like one of the mo- more common things that they'll do is they'll throw throw stuff at you. You know, mm-hmm. you know not at you, but close to your direction. Uh, they'll throw small pebbles, rocks, whatever. We noticed that as soon as we acknowledged what was happening, things would stop. So mm-hmm. we said, hey, let's ignore what's happening so when you ignore it it gets worse and worse stuff get bigger yeah things get bigger yeah things get bigger things you know they're trying to get your attention you know um so i'll when i want an encounter to last a long time and i'm enjoying it i just ignore what's going on around me you know, because it seems like it frustrates them. They're like little kids or something, like <laughs> yeah. you know, trying to get your attention, and you're not ignoring them. And they're like, "Hey, I'm here," you know. And I'm like, "No, don't care, don't care." So I'm ignoring them. So if I mean, want, what did uh, Bob Grumpy say? There, we're we're their TV. Yeah, we are. We're their TV, uh, and I, I 100% agree with that. Flat Rock's right. You know that's not the first time I heard that strategy before. Like you're saying, just ignore them and kind of keep talking, keep looking straight and, and just kind of say what you see mm-hmm. out of the corner of your eyes, say to the left of you, to the right of you. Mm-hmm. That's, uh, uh, and I agree with flat, flat rock. The one of the best strategies, just go out, have a good time. You know, if you go out mm-hmm. looking for Bigfoot, I would say that more often than not, you're not going to find anything. Are Next they able the entire to, TV show? Yeah. Are they <laughs> able to detect your intentions is a question I would pose, you know? Okay. Like for instance, if you have an intention, bad intentions or something, does your body vibrate at a certain frequency mm-hmm. that kind of uh, signals your intentions? You know, can they detect that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. But Especially if, if you have like a gun, I mean, they could definitely get on your attention there. They don't want to test that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think when they're in physical form that they could be injured just like we can, mm-hmm. you know, however, I do think that uh, there's some evidence out there that says that they're not from here, you know, that they don't live here. They just visit here. Mm-hmm. You know, the, uh, the, the, the way their story lines up almost overlapping with the fairy, fairy legends, mm-hmm. uh, our friend Jason McLean brought that up and I was like, that's, I've never heard that before. And it's incredible. Like it almost answers the question. Mm-hmm. Now I got to believe in fairies, but you know, it's not that much of a, <laughs> well, well, what are the orbs? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you're right there. Mm-hmm. My friend Randy from Minnesota said he saw a portal open up in the woods. Orbs came out, leaves oh, started crunching. Oh. Turn it. Okay. While I was at the LBL. Here we go. Here we go. Buckle up. Yeah. Okay. The, this was another paradigm shift for me. And it took me a minute to register what I saw. And, you know, a lot of times when I see something, it I don't even talk about it for quite a while because it, I have to, I have to process what I see. And understandable when we were at the, when we were at the LBL, there was a large group of us 
and we were seeing orbs. And I saw this light in the woods. And this other lady named Kathy and I were, we had both seen the light. And it was, it looked yellowy white, almost like daylight, right? Mm-hmm. So I start to move to another perspective, you know, to see if I can look through the brush. As I move, I see the source of the light. It's like, you know, it, and it's like it's two dimensional, but it's a square. It's perfectly, well, it's not rectangle, but it's had mm-hmm. perfectly 90 degree angles. I mean, I couldn't believe my eyes and I looked into it and it was like looking at the sun, maybe the color of looking at the sun. It was really mm-hmm. bright. Um, and I'm like, what the crap? You know, I mean, and then all of a sudden it disappeared. Whoop. Just it was gone that fast. And it wasn't but a, you know, a couple of minutes later, an orb came up from where that thing was to into view cl- kind of close to us um looking back onto what i saw it i looked into another world it was not the earth that i was looking at oh, when you looked through the, the square yeah when i looked through the square it was not the earth it was not there it was not it was not the earth that i was looking at i don't know if it was uh our or sun or what, but it was not here that I was looking that we were looking at. And it took a minute to process that, you know, um, I can't, that's something I'm still kind of struggling with a little bit. And if not for another encounter that was extremely similar by, uh, Adam Davies, if you ever, you can, when you hear him talk about it, He's done a, a few interviews on it and he's got a book about it. Mm-hmm. He saw a portal and he looked into another world and it's very, very difficult for him to talk about. And I understand it now. I understand it because it's something that's not supposed to exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you, yeah, it was a real portal and an orb came out from that. So, Okay, when you mentioned that one of your friends saw an, a portal and orbs coming out of it, that's yeah. it, it. I've seen the same thing. He compared it to the Northern Lights. It opened like an elevator door, kind of. And Northern Lights came out of it. Really? And uh, yeah, he said the or- it was two orbs floating up uh, top of the about the size of a basketball. Mm-hmm. And when it got about halfway to his gifting area, you know, with the peanut butter and the apples, mm-hmm. it turned in. They started hearing leaves crunching. And it kind of did a reverse uh, field of dreams, and they turned into Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they went over, and he saw them gathering up the stuff at the gifting area and get walk halfway, and then st- they turned into orbs, and the orbs started, their leaves were still crunching. It's like they mm-hmm. were invisible. And then mm-hmm. it just floated off. It was, Had he tells exact- that story. You can go ahead. <laughs> no, oh, it's just saying, I had the exact same encounter at Fort Mountain, where you, you see the orb mm-hmm. coming down. And I had these bionic ears on, and you could hear leaves crunching. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like the same thing, like you just said, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had bionic ears on, and you could hear leaves crunching. And that's why I thought it was the, uh, the forest ranger. It was like, because the forest ranger was supposed to come out and check on us. That's who I actually thought it was. And I'm like, it's the forest ranger. So that's why we were talking to it this whole time. And and not until the fleer was put on it did we realize that it was not human. It was not a it was not a person. There's nothing there. Just yeah, orb. nothing there. It's like they're it, it's like they're like in between cloaking and orbing. Yeah, that would, yeah I mean, <laughs> you know, it didn't turn into a Bigfoot that I saw, but it was an orb, and I heard crunching with it. He's got or like two walk. witnesses that was there with him. Saw it mm-hmm. like eleven thirty at night. Yeah, we had um, four or five witnesses there with us. You know, my entire team plus you know, a couple others. And that that orb and portal thing um, was there any similarities in like the landscape besides quartz when that happened? I don't know. 
like I, I mean, I, it's grasping at the straws. I'm just wondering, like, is this far enough away from people, or makes you well, wonder I mean, how, it was, how they pick I mean, a certain area? Honestly, they're very close to us. Yeah, I mean, you know? um, and I have to you know, credit both uh, Brandy and Krista from the Blondes and the Booze for showing this, showing us this location. Um, it's, uh, you know, when they took us there, you, you know, it, it's this place called, uh, I think they referred to it as the kill site where oh, some yeah. people were allegedly killed. Mm -hmm. Um, but the orbs were very close to us and you can actually see on the film that, you know, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be close, to, you know, you'll see in the film you know, when, when it, does, when it comes out, how close they get to you. Uh, at one point we were buzzed by some of the orbs and, and this was the, the second time that I was out. Um, and it startled one of the people that, that I was with. Uh, they came with like three feet of us. Now when, when it buzzed us, it like appeared and then kind of buzzed us kind of like a bird would do. And then it disappeared. And when it appeared, you know, both Johnny and I, we saw it you know, virtually at the same time, and it kind of startled me. It kind of jumped back, you know, because it startled him. And the, the the orb itself was translucent. You could see through it. And But that is the second time that that's happened to me. Uh, also at Fort Mountain, they had another one, uh, another orb to buzz us, and this one was red, kind of reddish amber. And anyway, mm -hmm. so... It was also translucent. So the closer they get to you, the more translucent they are. The we I've tried to approach them, and uh, they keep a certain distance away from you. You know, they look more solid when they're more away from you. But as I yeah. would try to walk toward them, they would they would back up. You know, and I'll then I back up, and then it moves forward. It makes you wonder if they can like pick the entity they're going to turn into. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's really odd. That, you, you know, they it's still perplexing to this day. I mean, um, I I got fascinated with orbs. You know, uh, bec you know, it, it, they, they just kind of take my words away. They're just fascinating to be able to to, to look at and see because they're not supposed to exist, mm -hmm. and you're having this encounter that's lasting for hours. And it represents every facet of the phenomenon, too. It does. It, it all does. comes from that. Every mm -hmm. ghost, the aliens, the mm -hmm. feet. It does. So, you, you know, I've got a million questions concerning orbs, and I, I was hoping to be able to answer a few of them in this film. However, I think that we ended up uh, creating more questions. I'll say a million more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't work. Then we solved one. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do any kind of a uh, um, lack of a better term meditation before you go out just to try Absolutely. to clear your mind? Absolutely. I meditate before I go out. And every time that I meditate, uh, I have found that I have much better success because my mind is cleared. Mm -hmm. It's like I try to broadcast my intention. Mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, I'm not here to hurt you. We're just here to commune with you. And it seems to uh, really help your experiences when you do that. I, I that's why I was going to ask. Yeah, I, well, well, I did ask it. I was going to see how you prepared. You maybe smudged mm -hmm. yourself a little or whatever. I, I, I do. I, I go out and uh, I, you know I sit by. If we got a campfire, I sit by the campfire and I zone out. But I meditate and you know I, I try to talk to the beings that are around us. I'm firmly mm -hmm. believe that we're never alone. I think there's beings and either uh, that we can't see or that uh, is in dimensions. That's just outside of our 3d world. Mm -hmm. uh, I do ask for, you know, for help and guidance and, and try to relay our attentions and it seems to work for me. Yeah, it, I kind of, I'm on your same boat. Like, I'm real big into manifestation mm -hmm. and things like that. It seems to work. I'm so, I'm, I'm getting kind of a, a good at it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I did some CE5 things in my backyard, and I've gotten a few results. Uh, I've made shooting stars appear. 
really? just from thinking about it. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm not counting those as except for one, which is. Uh, but at, at one time I did a C5 and I'm like, I'm just outside, you know, building my, my little campfire, my solo stove, you know, mm -hmm. just dick, dickering about, as they say, fiddling. And uh, I'm doing like a C5, just kind of lean, lean back a little bit. And I'm like, hey, guys, give me a sign if you're here. And I swear an alien or I say alien, a UFO flashed its high beams at me. Really? Anyway, anyway you know, shooting stars do a certain thing. Shooting stars look a certain way. This was something white streaked across for a second right in front of my face like wow. just like at this angle here, like an undeniable, not a shooting star. I saw it. And it's like, it's like it flashed. It's like a state trooper flashing its lights at you on the interstate kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was not huge, but it was like, you could tell it was like something just like, okay, we're revealing yourself to you right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Speaking of being flashed. <laughs> it's not another Christian story, is it? I don't want to no. No, it's not a Christian <laughs> story. We, we were uh, <laughs> we were at the uh, LBL, and we were having this interaction with this orb. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by interaction, it we would ask for it, say, "Hey, can you make yourself brighter?" Lo and behold, it would get brighter. And we asked it, "Did it know us?" And one of them asked, "Hey, do you know Greg?" And just like what you were talking about, uh, it's it kind of felt like somebody takes a flashlight and put a high beam on you just for an instant mm -hmm. and then it's gone. You know, you can feel your pupils just, you know, kind of uh, get real small, sort of. I, I know that mm -hmm. same, sounds strange, sounds strange, but you can tell like when a flashlight hits you in the face. Yeah, it's just like, mm. yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, and that happened to me. And then I was like, crap, did it recognize me? You know? Uh, cause somebody else, Hey, do you know who Greg is? And then you know, poof, I'm like, Hey, yeah. Knock, flash knocks me. you down. Yeah. <laughs> it flashed me. So, you know, that, that, I don't know. That's just an, uh, an interesting story, but that's what I mean by they will interact with you, you know, sometimes if, if they want to, you, you know, and I think they understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I think they do. And I think they get annoyed with us sometimes too, because I'll do it every night. I won't get action sometimes. And it's like, dude, stop. <laughs> the other night, I, the other night I was at, like, dude, you know we're real. Like you do this shit all the time. Mm -hmm. Like why? <laughs> like you're just you're just messing around now. Mm -hmm. And the other night I was outside trying to do it, and and this is this is probably coincidental at best. But I was like, you know, give me a sign, show me uh, a shooting star or an orb right now. And these lightning bugs just kicked up at my privacy fence right then. I'm like, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm like, you're going to be that way about it. Lightning bugs, really? <laughs> lightning so, because, because I was like, I asked for an orb. There it was. They went, I've big. never, yeah, I mean, it's probably coincidental, but it happened like right when I asked for that. Mm -hmm. Like here, here, but, here. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I don't think anything is ever coincidental. You know, no. there's always a, there's always a, uh, a plan. You want to know something funny? I always know when I'm going to have a good day at work is if I have to clean up dog piss after before I go to work because it's I'm like me paying my dues to the universe for the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my wife's old dog. <laughs> it's, I know it sounds weird, but like mm -hmm. I think like the currency of the universe is us kind of suffering, like paying mm -hmm. our dues in, Carm, uh, temporal punishment and karma and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I always know like this is going to be a weird day. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, well, if, if if mine pisses in the house, I just get, uh, I'm like, Arr. it's not every time, but like if I'm feeling, uh, let me let me let me take a step back because it's not like something that happens all the time. Like I don't think of that every time it happens if there's an accident, but mm -hmm. like if I'm particularly worried about something at work, and like even if I'm dreaming about it, that kind of worry. Mm -hmm. If if something like that happens the next day, I got to clean something up. Not even necessarily that. I'll just be like, okay, well, that's a, and, and it's almost 100. percent like it always works out pretty well. You know, I get hmm. stopped by a train. I always get some kind of random inconvenience that's not related to it, and it's always cool when I get there. <laughs> well, it, it, at least you know when you're going to have a good day or not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just like, come on. Mm -hmm. This morning was one of them. I was yeah. like, come on, what are we doing? I was actually on time. But we are actually, uh, we're already planning on uh, film number three now. Yeah, I was going to ask you what that's going to be. Like, where's 
Well, uh, I'm going to keep part of it secret, but we're going to, we actually start to film in October for film number three. Um, I'm going to, it's going to be in, in, in two segments. I'm going to maybe go out to Texas or Oklahoma. Mm. And uh, part of it's going to be in Georgia. So mm. I, I'm just going to kind of leave it at that. But, you know, the, the land between the lakes, uh, we're shooting for it to come out in December. Uh, I don't know what platform it's going to be on, but I do know that I want it. I want to have a screening at uh, a theater, maybe in Huntsville. So I'm going to invite all of the cast members, the people that played in it, to come down and, and see it. And I may have to sell tickets to uh, to the film so that I can kind of recover some, you know, some of the money. Because it's very expensive to rent a theater. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, you, you know, maybe selling tickets, and uh, it's my hope that uh, I can do it to show both films, the Downey Booger and uh, the Land Between the Lakes. Well, look up Shenanigans. Uh, they have a movie theater in there in Huntsville. Shenanigans. I think it's what it's called. The local there's a local horror movie club. I have it right here. Uh, a mm -hmm. local horror movie club does their um, week um, weekly meetup to review a movie, a random horror movie uh, mm -hmm. at Shenanigans Comedy Theater. It's not like it's on like a back street, but it's like in a. I got a theater in there. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, I've never been there, and I'm talking out of my ass right now. But mm -hmm. I know the horror movie club watches horror movies there, so I. Well, there you go. Watch Greg Ogle's movies. There you go. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't know. Some people might think they're horror movies, like they're horribly done or something. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen the room. I think you got him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the uh, the the LBL should be out in December. So it's what we're shooting for. Um, don't know what platform yet, but uh, we're extremely hopeful. And I, like I said, I, I've already seen the first few minutes of the film, and I'm just I'm blown away how it starts i am if you think the trailer is good the first few minutes just will blow you away it'll blow you cool. away yeah i've got i've got a link to the trailer in the description of this video anybody wants to watch it and oh, fantastic and a, and a link to tubi for the the booger and a link to all the ways to watch the booger because there's two or three different little ways yeah 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 it's, it's, all, it, it's all in there it, yeah you can see the booger for free you have to watch the ads but you can see the booger for free <laughs> Sounds sounds like a random adult content. You get to watch the ads, but the booger's free. Hmm. Yeah, let let us know about the, let us know about that theater because I'll definitely promote mm -hmm. it. And what, yeah, when when it comes closer to time, I will uh, make an announcement about it. I actually think that I'm going to do monthly updates. I'll probably do like a uh, go on YouTube Live or something like that and have monthly updates. Uh, tell us, you know, just inform people where we're at on the film, uh, what's going on with it. And if we've had any troubles or uh, you can expect troubles, like we've already had some troubles that you know, when I was at, at the LBL for the second time, every bit of that footage was corrupted. Every bit of it. See, that just makes me sad. And I had yeah. nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. So even though I'm I was like, there for it, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You were there. Uh and, and you know we had some good footage, you know, you know some good things that were filmed. Uh, I can't say that it was as good as the, the the first time I was there, but it was good. I mean, it was as good as any other film ever had. And I was excited to be able to put it in, but I was very sad when I turned out and I started looking at it, and it's corrupted. I'm like, oh my god, really? I was very sad. I would, yeah, I was very jump sad. off of a cliff. <laughs> very sad. Yeah, I was. I was. I was very sad and upset. <laughs> So well, well, Greg. Thanks for being on. It's been a, a great time. We'll went over. I mean, no, there's no time limit on this podcast, but an hour and a half is a damn fine podcast. And <laughs> we had the all stars in the chat: Flat Rock and Kristen, and everybody. Mike X. Hmm. Well, so thanks everybody for watching and and putting up with my ramblings. Hmm? Yeah, check out always to watch Greg's stuff in the description. And uh, everybody on the audio apps, it's in the description of the audio apps too. But you'll have to open up another browser. I mean. But and yeah. I would appreciate it if you did. And Will, it's it's the the Downey Booger is a good documentary. It's better than half the other crap out there. And there's some crap out there too. 
Thank you, sir. Appreciate it's, actually, that. it's actually good content. It's right up there. I watch Joe Rogan questions everything, his little six part series. And I watched mm -hmm. Downey Booger and then like some thing about Montauk that I, I find interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I right. appreciate that. Oh, have a good night, Greg. And uh, have fun down there tra watching Beach traffic. Brother. And we're going to hit that theme music. I never didn't believe in Bigfoot. I never believed in it. I didn't believe in it. I never gave it any thought. They kept wood knocking back and forth to each other. And it was in a pattern. Barn owls don't typically throw rocks. They come across these tracks. Sasquatch is still not on my mind.